Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about the general workflow of processing LiDAR point cloud data to build maps. So we will be looking at pre-processing techniques such as denoising, downsampling techniques, as well as uh, object removal and segmentation. And while looking at those techniques, we will be switching to our code to practice what we've learned or visualize what we've learned so that we have a better understanding of these different concepts. As discussed in our previous video in this tutorial series, we saw that LiDAR data points have correlated X, Y, and Z values, depending on that LiDAR sensor. Of course, if we're dealing with a two-dimensional LiDAR sensor or a 360-degree LiDAR sensor, then we would be having X and Y coordinates. Uh, values and as part of the processing procedure there must be steps to deal with these unstructured data and so there is a general workflow typically for building maps using LiDAR data and we will be discussing that general workflow in this video. Point cloud data are made up of 3D coordinate systems of surfaces and that's what we've discovered in our last video. And it, these, these data points aim to describe the real world around us. However, this spatial data remains unstructured at times and contains no semantic information. Thus, it's generally very useful to structure point clouds into higher level representations through pre-processing techniques. Like every data-related project, the first step is to properly pre-process that data. When creating a map using LiDAR data, pre-processing can look like denoising, desampling, object removal, such as ground object removal, and segmentation. In this step, we are removing features that might be irrelevant to the task that we're performing. If we're going to, for example, map a room, for an instance, then ground data may be irrelevant to us at the moment, so we can remove that as part of the pre-processing step. And another popular pre-processing step that we will be looking at as well in this video today is segmentation. And segmentation here refers to spatially grouping points with similar properties into homogeneous regions. After pre-processing LiDAR data, here we register two point clouds to figure out the relative motion between them. If you're a robot and you're moving with a LiDAR sensor across an environment and you're capturing point clouds of surfaces as you move along. Now, how do you take these different point cloud data at each specific time frame that you're moving in this environment and creating a map of the same environment by stitching these different data or point clouds together. That's essentially what registration aims to do, the motion between them. There are many approaches to this problem or to this step, such as the iterative closest point, the ICP, which is an algorithm that keeps one point cloud, which is the reference fixed while transforming usually a combination of translation and rotation, the other, to match the reference. Then we have NDT, phase correlation, and feature-based, which we will not be going into depth in this video. And after completing the registration phase, pose estimates are being generated, providing us with a pose composed of translation and rotation estimates of each pose. And these post estimates are added to the post graph iteratively, and then through aligning point clouds, they build a map. However, drift from the accurate location may occur when we are taking, let's say, multiple readings of the LiDAR sensor and we're moving the LiDAR sensor around the room, then we might need to account for that drift using loop closure. And it is added to estimate the pose graph for a more cleaner map. Loop closure takes into consideration all previously visited locations when estimating the pose graph. 
IMU and GPS data is also used to properly estimate the poses used to create the pose graph. Now that we have a general idea of how LiDAR data is used to build a graph, let us take a look at the different pre-processing techniques. One of those pre-processing techniques that we've mentioned earlier is downsampling. And we will be taking a look at voxel downsampling. As we've mentioned in our previous video in this series, voxels are similar to pixels in an image and are abstracted 3D units with predefined volumes, positions, and attributes. They are like a topological representation of an object in 3D. Downsampling 3D point clouds into voxels reduces the amount of data while still preserving the overall structure of that point cloud. A voxel, as we've mentioned, refers to a small cubic volume in 3D space that groups together nearby points in a point cloud. The size of the voxels used for downsampling can be adjusted based on the desired level of detail and specific requirements of the use case that you're working with. So let's get to coding and look at a point cloud and downsample it. In our previous tutorial, what we did was we visualized a dataset known as the Redwood dataset. That's from the data module, which is just the dataset module of Open3D. And we looked at how we can visualize the datasets after reading them. And we talked about the different parameters of the visualization tool, and we've looked at the same data set but in different data formats, the PLY and the PCD. So what happens exactly when we are voxel downsampling? What happens is we will be specifying a voxel of a certain size. And we will be we will be bucketing points into those voxels. So let's say that there's a voxel here that we're going to bucket points in, a voxel right here that we're going to bucket points in, and then each occupied voxel will generate exactly one point, and that point is the average of all the points inside of that voxel. So if we're going to look at the example that we're going to uh, code right now, we will be creating a voxel of size 0 0.02 and then bucketing all the points in a certain area into that voxel of size 0 0.02 and then generating a point and that point is the average of all those points within that voxel of size 0 0.02. And to do that we just need a simple function called voxel underscore down underscore sample where we will specify the voxel size and we will be applying it to the point cloud of our interest. And then through visualization, we have this voxel uh, or a voxel down sampled point cloud. And we can play with these parameters. So if we increase this, of course, the size of the voxel will be much higher. Therefore, the, 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 the down sampling rate will be much higher, meaning that this will be of a lesser resolution. So if we keep it at 0 0.05 and we run that, we can see that we will get a more uh, sparsely uh, spaced uh, point cloud. And when we reduce that to 0 0.025, we get a more, let's say, uh, lesser downsampled point cloud. Another common technique used after pre-processing techniques such as downsampling and denoising is vertex normal estimation. And it's very important uh, because it aids in the calculation of surface normals for each point in the point cloud data. So this can provide useful information about the orientation and curvature of a surface at a specific point. And this can be really useful for many applications like visualization, surface analysis for curvature and orientation, and registration, which is the next step after pre-processing. 
Surface normals estimated using vertex normal estimation can help align and register multiple point cloud data together by matching their orientation at surfaces at corresponding points. It also might be useful to crop point cloud data. So let's take this example. So let's say we'd like to crop something out of a uh, point cloud. How can we do that? To do so, we will need a polygon with the volume similar to that object that we're trying to crop out of the point cloud. Open3D has a demo uh, polygon that we will be using to crop the chair out of this image. First, using the demo crop point cloud, we're going to download this available data. And we're going to read the volume using the read selection polygon volume by reading the path or the crop JSON path of this variable that has uh, downloaded this demo crop point cloud that contains the polygon that will help us crop the chair out of the point cloud. And we can crop it by simply using the crop point cloud to crop the volume from the point cloud. And then again, using the visualization drop plotly, we will be visualizing the chair that we have cropped out. And just like that, we have cropped the chair out of the image. But what if we wanted to do the reverse? Instead of showcasing the chair that we've cropped out, we want to showcase the point cloud with the chair missing. How can we do that? To do so, we will be using the compute point cloud distance. And we will be considering this chair and the original point cloud as two point clouds, where we will be measuring the distance between the chair and the chair point cloud and all points in the original point cloud. If the distances are practically the same, meaning that the distances are nearly zero, that means in that area we are having a chair in the original point cloud, right? So we will be saving the distances as a NumPy array so that we can make some NumPy uh, manipulations and operations. And by looking at all the distances that are greater than 0 0.01, meaning that all the points in the original point cloud with distance values from the chair point cloud being greater than 0.1, meaning that those points are not lying within the vicinity of the chair that we're trying to crop, we will be saving those indices. And then we will be cropping it using this indices that we've gathered. So we will be select by index. We're going to use this function to select all indices that are not points in the chair point cloud and saving them as a new point cloud known as the PLY without chair. And then we can visualize this using the drop plotly and see exactly that we've cropped out the chair from the point cloud. So by removing the points closest to the chair, by computing the distances between these two point clouds, we efficiently cropped the chair out of the original point cloud. Thank you for watching this video. In our next tutorial, we will be taking a look at one of the most common pre-processing methods, which is segmentation and clustering of point cloud data. And we will look at different ways we, that we can do that using the Open3D library.